Hello, Chinese viewers. I am DS, your psychologist, and welcome to another episode on Channel Eight. So recently, I have done an evaluation of my life. So I've started to relax much more. I enjoy myself, and a lot of times I do something like this. So in a way, I feel very blessed because I am able to weave work and play together. That's the best. So I have also been spending much more time with my dog because I have been neglecting my dog for some time. So my dog is 12 years old. I have actually featured him, Reuben, in two of my previous episodes. So as I was playing with my dog, Reuben, I was wondering, do dogs have MBTI types? So this is what we're going to do today. So now I'm in my hall, in Singapore we call it the living room. What I am going to do now is to lure my dog over. Wilburn! Wilburn ah! Wilburn! Do you want that? Because we speak three different languages to the dog, so, I think my dog is able to understand all three different languages. One more stick, ah! What got yeah? Boy, doesn't want to eat. So, I think Reuben is a very fussy dog. Not every dog treat he will like. Okay, let me try a different one. Now, I have taken another dog treat. And I think he knows it and he's very excited about it. Look! There! Hey! This is like a morning treat. Oh, he finishes food so fast. I think some of you will be wondering why am I just only showing clips of me feeding my dog? <laughs> Actually, my dog likes to self-entertain. See? But isn't this episode about the MBTI of a pet or a dog? But the determination of any MBTI type is based on cognitive functions. And what do I mean by cognitive functions? It is thinking functions. So in order for me to deduce the dog's MBTI type, I need to know how he is thinking or what he is thinking about when he is going about his daily activities. So at first, I can see that the dog doesn't want the first treat. So there could be a lot of interpretation for this. He could be fussy. Then in this case, I might attribute F-I-T-E to the dog. But there could also be other reasons why the dog doesn't want a first treat. He could be testing me. Then I would attribute N-E to the dog. So because I will never know what the dog is thinking because the dog cannot speak, then it is almost impossible to do the MBTI of the dog. But we have an innovative way. <laughs> so in our episode, we have done an MBTI tarot series. So we have matched every MBTI to a tarot card. So we can also do this for poker cards. So in the deck of poker cards, there are no pages. So I am going to use the tens to represent the pages. <laughs> this is a very stupid way of trying to determine the MBTI type of a dog. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to place all these poker cards onto the floor and see if the dog can pick any one of them and I see what the MBTI type is. We have a system of matching the MBTI type to a poker card and this is how it goes.
So here I've actually shuffled the poker cards that I need. I added a joker, but I now do not know where all these different cards are and which is which. So I added a joker just in case the dogs themselves, right, within their community, there is actually an MBTI type for the dogs, which we didn't know of. So we are using a human type of uh, concept and imposing it on dogs. So if the dog picks the joker, then it means that the dogs themselves, they have a different MBTI type. In, in, in the beginning. In the... Rubana, come here. Pick a card, please. Which one do you like? Pick a card. Rubana, Rubana here. Kato, kato, kato. Pick a card. Rubana. Okay, okay, okay. Which one do you like? Step on it. <laughs> He's not interested at all. He doesn't understand. Rubana. Pick a card. Okay, he has stepped on this one accidentally. <laughs> and it's moved. So let's see what this is. It's a Queen of Swords. That's an INTJ. Well, I don't know that that card is. I have shuffled them randomly and just placed them on the floor. My dog is an INTJ. That sounds really far-fetched. INTJ. No, cannot be. <laughs> so many viewers may find this method of testing a person's MBTI type to be rather intriguing or even ridiculous. However, this method can be scientific. So how does it work? So mathematically and methodologically, you can get 1,600 people with known MBTI types. That means they really know what the MBTI type is for sure, based on cognitive functions and cognitive stats to pick a random card from the poker deck and see if it matches their MBTI type, the probability of they getting correct is 1 out of 16. So definitely you will have about 100 correct answers. If based on chi-square distribution, there are 200, then it seems as if this method has a better probability of assigning the correct MBTI type. So it might work based on intuition. But this method definitely fails because the dog doesn't know how to pick a card and there are no known norms for dogs. So for sure, dogs have temperaments. If you are a dog owner, if you are a cat owner, you surely know that your pets have a personality. But it may be very far-fetched to say that dogs have an MBTI type. So in other words, I think we are just doing this episode for fun and for education's sake. MBTI type is based on cognitive functions. In order for you to know the MBTI type of a person, you have to know how he or she is thinking and what is the underlying mechanism behind his or her thoughts. Okay. Ruben is going to say goodbye to you. Bye-bye. So I'm going to say goodbye to you too. If you enjoyed this episode, do give us a like. And if you have not subscribed, do consider subscribing so that can bring you more interesting and fun stuff including MBTI and <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to sign off now and I'll see you in our next episode. Bye-bye.